regulatory environment. Um, if you haven't spent a lot of time doing uh, code searches, this is one of those things. Uh, there's a number of books out there, some Qing books that are really great on this, very simple to read. Uh, there's a, a number of other sort of textbook type things that are very useful for understanding these. But a few things you should absolutely uh, understand. Uh, one of them is that within the sort of uh, regulatory environment, um, the key one from a site planning standpoint is going to be the zoning code. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of other codes. The building code will have an impact. Uh, for example, uh, I may not be able to build a building within a few feet of the property line because of uh, worry about fire jumping from one property to another or something like that. That's the kind of thing that would show up in the building code. But generally, the site planning conditions that you're worried about are zoning code. So things like FAR. Now, not everywhere in the country uses the term FAR, but I do believe they use it on the exam. I've seen it in a couple of practice exams. Um, FAR is floor area ratio. That's a way of understanding massing. It's, really, it's a ratio of footage of the building compared to footage of the site. Uh, and it's very typical. If it's not FAR, there's some other way that they do the exact same thing in any code, zoning code across the country. So understanding massing is a big deal. Uh, you don't want giant buildings right next to little tiny buildings, usually, uh, unless you're Houston. Um, they seem to be okay with it. Uh, permitted uses is sort of a concept that you'll find across the country. So the idea that if I have a residential district, it doesn't mean that I can uh, only put residences in there. I can also put a, maybe a small stores or uh, churches or a whole bunch of other things. It's a whole bunch of permitted uses in any given uh, residential or, excuse me, any given zoning district. Uh, setbacks is definitely something that will show up and you'll have to sort of think about uh, some way on this exam. The idea that setbacks uh, are there. So I have front setbacks, I have side setbacks, I have rear setbacks. And those are the property is the property, but I can't necessarily build straight up to it. So one key question here is if I have, a let's say, a rear setback of uh, 40 feet, that means I can't build anything in that rear last 40 feet of a site. I say that, and yet anybody in Chicago knows, well, that's not true. Uh, there's garages and all kinds of things in the last 40 feet. A setback has a definition. It's not, um, there are different types of buildings. There are primary buildings, and then there are secondary buildings. So you have to kind of understand those things in order to understand how the setbacks work. Some things can be within a setback, some things can't. The idea of amendments and variances, this is also something that shows up a lot, um, and that's just, uh, there are often times when what you want to do just doesn't fit into the zoning code. Well, sometimes that's just too bad. You just can't build it. And sometimes you can find a way to amend the code or get a variance, an allowance uh, to do something um, altering. Um, they probably won't get too deep into any of the specifics of the differences between amendments and variances because they're actually, I think, a little different uh, in different uh, jurisdictions. Um, but uh, amendments are, tend to be bigger issues, uh, variances tend to be uh, smaller issues, and allowances tend to be sort of uh, uh, easier ones right across the desk. The other codes, like I said, building codes, but there's also a whole series of overlay issues. So things like um, historical districts, right? You may be in a certain district that has a certain set of zoning, but there may be a whole second set of issues you have to follow that aren't in the zoning code but there are other issues that you have to still follow. Like maybe you, you can't build in front of an historical building or something that you can't block the site of it or you can't change the shape of it, something along those lines. Um, uh, FAA is an interesting one. Um, if you're building near uh, airport, you have to, uh, you, you're following the zoning code, but you still can't build a tall building near an airport, right? Because the plane's gonna hit it. Um, there's uh, watershed issues, a whole bunch of other ones. And then there's a different type of overlay, and this one is kind of new uh, on the horizon in the last 10, 15 years. Um, people started talking about it a lot, and I, I hear that it's starting to show up onto the exam. And this is an overlay of things like uh, it's possible to have, uh, say, a zoning code that says, all right, given this site, the size, uh, in this situation, this district, uh, let's say you can do uh, uh, 20 apartments. Um, but if you're gonna make them, 50% uh, of them be affordable, uh, at a very specific uh, legal understanding of what affordable means, then you get two extra apartments. That's an overlay zoning where there's a set zone, uh, a set bunch of rules and regulations, but then there are other issues that allow you to do other things. Uh, another one that people in urban settings often will understand is I can do sometimes a taller building if I give a plaza as an amenity to the city, right? That's an overlay zone, right? So it's, there's a set zone, but that doesn't, that's not the only issue. You have to sort of understand there's multiple issues. 
Uh, covenants and easements um, also show up uh, a lot because um, they're, they're sort of odd. Uh, a covenant is essentially a zoning code that's private. So like if I have a gated community or something like that, uh, there's probably a bunch of rules about how you can build your house. You know, it has to have peaked roofs or it has to have, uh, it has to be cedar sided or something like there's these rules that are specific and it's to create a sense of continuity. You have to follow those because they're legal to the deed, but they are not legal to the city. The city doesn't care. The municipality doesn't care. That's a covenant that's legal to the deed. So it's a private legal contract that you've signed by uh, buying into that uh, particular development. Easements are kind of similar. Easements are uh, uh, contracts that ride with the deed. So uh, if I have a utility easement or something, uh, I have a driveway easement for somebody, that's something that rides with the deed. So it's a legal construct, but it's not part of the zoning code. Right? It's, not, it's not a regulation. It's part of a contract that's on that uh, site. Blackspectacles.com is the home of online learning for architecture and design. You can go to blackspectacles.com, kind of get a taste of this online ARE prep curriculum we built with AI Chicago and Mike, covering all seven sections of the exam. And there are free tutorials in every one of those courses. As a part of today's session, you're eligible for coupon codes for your ARE membership. 15% off the monthly membership and 30% off an annual membership all through the end of the month. And we're doing group memberships. So if you want to get one for your firm or if you want your firm to buy one for you, you can go to blackspectacles.com slash business or just email me. We're running a promotion again where business memberships are 15% off as well. Our next webinar is going to be different. What we're going to do is we're going to sort of have a no holds barred Q&A session with Mike. It's not specific to an exam. Whatever exam you're working on, you have a question, you've tried to solve a vignette and you don't like your answer, you're unsure about your answer, put it in a PDF and email it to me. And what we'll do is we're just going to take them first come first serve and everyone who submits them will take an hour and Mike will answer them one after the other. So it'll be a cool event because if you actually have a question, you can get a real answer. And if you just want to see what other people are kind of wrestling with, it'd be a great way to learn from other people's questions and problems and so on. And that's going to be on April 22nd.